Hey everyone, how you doing? So we're back in the UK. We are. After almost nine months in the States, aren't we? Yeah. So for those of you that are new to our channel, I'm Julia. And I'm Gary. And we've been in the States and Canada for the last nine months in our British motorhome. So, right, this video here is all about talking to you about First of all, what was our experience like? And second of all, what did we learn? So first of all, let's say a great big thank you to all of our subscribers, followers on Facebook, Absolutely. everybody on Insta, even that Threads thing that like I'm threading us with. <laughs> um, but anyway, all of those social media channels, thank you very much for following us and thank you for the lovely comments. We love you all guys. Uh, right, so let's get down to business. First of all, so how did we plan our nine-month adventure in the States. Dun, dun, dun. Well, <laughs> on the back of a cigarette yeah, right, Pretty much. <laughs> if, if, if I still spoke, we would have, wouldn't we? Well, literally, we had no plan whatsoever. And I remember we'd bought a motorhome. Get, get this, you won't believe this. We'd bought our motorhome just before, sort of, the year before you were getting out of the army. Yeah. Gary had done 39 years in the military mm. and we were ready for an adventure. Kids are all grown up, so we thought, right, what should we do? And we'd, we'd had this motorhome anyway that we'd slept in three nights. <laughs> three nights. <laughs> before taking it full time. Yeah, I know. Uh, and to the States. <laughs> However, we, uh, we decided that we wanted to do a really big adventure. And we'd seen something about someone in America. Oh, I think it was that million pound motorhome it was, thing. yes. And we were like, wow, can you go to the America in it? But we struggled to find information about it, yeah. which was one of the reasons why we started to do the social media channels, which we weren't going to bother with, were we? No, it was just going to be a record initially, wasn't it? It was just going to be um, a few pictures or, you know, just so the kids could see what we were doing and family and friends could like follow us, if you will. Um, and then we realised there was nothing that you could find about how to ship a motor home. So the first thing we did was, Gary, you did a bit of research, didn't you? Just online about shipping companies in general and, and whether or not you had to stick it in a big container or whether or not it could go on like a Roro. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it, it does the Roro. And uh, whilst we were looking, I was only able to find one shipping company because mm -hmm. of what, what I was reading was point to be there. But since then, we know there are several companies that do it. So it's really worth checking the prices of, of your shipping. We've gone with the same shipping company on the way back. You buy your shipping separately. So you don't book a return ticket or anything. You wouldn't necessarily know when you were coming back anyway. No. And right as we're talking right now, and as this video goes out, we have our motorhome in the middle of the ocean, don't we? Well, not in the middle of the ocean. It may not be. Uh, but she's she's shipping as we as we talk. Yeah. It takes a couple of weeks, and unfortunately, we've had a bit of a problem, haven't we? Yeah, this time it was delayed um, mm. by about seven days. So uh, expecting it about the about the twelfth, but now it looks like it's going to be about nineteenth. So nineteenth so of December, it's coming in. So. We are going to do a shipping video on the way back. However, we can't do it until we check it over at Liverpool to give you a full picture of what that shipping experience from the States to Europe or the UK is like. Yeah, because um, we want to, well, well, I want to see what condition it's in when it gets back here. And obviously mm -hmm. anything that I can pass on as information to you guys, then I'll We have got plenty of videos that cover how to ship. Um, and I will be putting links below this in the description, but we will also be doing some more up-to-date stuff as well. So when we got to America, what did we really think as we arrived there? The first thing you're going to need is a phone. Um, so yeah. in terms of what did we do? Well, it was actually a lot more simple than we realised. We walked into a T-Mobile shop and we got a pay-as-you-go SIM. That's all we did. Now, we, I'd read... On a th you'd read on a thread about some guy who'd got T-Mobile before or something yeah, like that's that. Right. So that's that's why we did it. There are other um, there are other people you can go through. Which was the other one that you can go with? I think it's another big company. Yeah, the other one was Verizon. Something like that. So all you do is you go in and you get your sieve. Now it is quite expensive. It was sixty dollars a month, for, but it was for unlimited data. Yeah. However, we hadn't linked it initially to Wi-Fi calling back to the UK. We didn't think it was that important. It actually turned out to be extremely important Very because Gary's important. credit card kept getting blocked and then his debit card. So we were having big problems with our bank for probably the first sort of six months, weren't we? Near yeah. enough the whole trip, yeah. basically. Despite telling them that we were in the States. 
So the first things you're going to do once you realize that you want to come to America is start to look at, obviously, your shipping, but your visa. We've got a 10-year multi-entry visa, and we've got another video that talks you through the process of visas. But essentially, it's a laborious process yes. that you're going to need the patience of a saint or Gary to <laughs> fill in for you. Um, actually, I had to do my own, didn't I? You did, yes. It was really long. Anyway, then you need an appointment at the embassy in, in London, London, and the whole process can take a while, so make sure you've given yourself a good couple of months. We got a 10 year multi entry, which means we can go back and forth to the States. We can stay for six months. Yeah. Then we have to leave the States for at least one day. Now, that can be going into Canada, and then we've got another six months, and this is for 10 years. Um, otherwise, you can go for what are they called? An, an uh, Esther. An Esther, yeah. Yeah, they're, is... they're like three months, though, yeah. aren't they? So it wouldn't have been long enough, really, no. for us. Um, and it's certainly not worthwhile for shipping. Uh, and the other thing you're really going to have to get is medical insurance. Now, I had an accident while I was there. So that was really, I was so chuffed that we had medical insurance. Yeah, absolutely. Because you don't know what's going to happen. And it was a stupid accident. I just fell out of an RV, really done my knee in, twisted it. And I'm, actually, I'm sitting here today, nine, ten weeks in, and I'm still not right. So you don't know what's going to happen, no. do you? That cost us, what? Two grand? About £2,000. And that was with LV. Um, you got that here in the UK before, yeah, before we, went. we left. Now, we'll just quickly cover on what did we do when we got here? Like, how did we plan what we were going to do? Well, we didn't really plan <laughs> it that well, did we, Babs? We wanted to chase the sun, though, didn't we? We did want to chase the sun. <laughs> so that's exactly what we did. We planned our route in our mind, if not physically, on, on we were coming in at March into Baltimore. We knew we wanted to head south. And then we knew we wanted to head north as the weather heated up because we've got a van without <laughs> air conditioning. Right. So we didn't want to be boiling. No, I was already boiling anyway with the menopause. So I didn't want to be double boiling. So anyway, this was the route we took in the end. And we covered nearly 18,000 miles. Check this out. <laughs> So when we got to America, there was a couple of things that really shocked us, weren't there? Uh, yeah, for me, it was the driving. <laughs> <laughs> they were not like, imagine arriving in JFK and it's raining and it's dark and you're in a hire car, so you don't really know what you're doing. And you're driving like an old bimble, like he was. And then they were like, <laughs> New Yorkers like honking like crazy, weren't they? Like, is it who are these yes. couple of old folks? Trying to get down the... Oh, it was horrible, wasn't it? Yeah, and it didn't help the fact that I thought wrongly that the, the hotel for the first night was only about an hour away. <laughs> we both thought that that was our fault. So we booked a hotel in Baltimore where we were picking up the, the shipping and we'd flown into JFK. Well, it's actually three and a half hours, uh, nearly four in that horrible rain, wasn't yeah. it? Um, so be warned about that. Gary's actually created a driving video. So if you are coming to the States, give it a watch because there are so many things that we didn't appreciate when we got here, yeah. just to know. So I'll put the link to the driving video below as well. Gosh, I'm bushing the bids today, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, so the other thing that really shocked us was the price of food. I know. Oh, we, well, we like to um, mix our shopping around. We'll go to Sainsbury's, we'll go to Lidl, we'll go to Aldi all, all over. And the UK has some really great deals, which people don't realise until they don't, but they're not in the UK. <laughs> yeah. But in America, my God, I was expecting to go into Walmart and get everything for like a fiver. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I must have read that wrong. Like a bag of oranges is like five pounds. How can that be? Let me just get my calculator. It's crazy prices. So that really shocked us. So you do need to be aware that you will spend probably more money than you thought. Now, there are places like Grocery Outlet on the West Coast 
which is a yeah, brilliant, brilliant shop, yeah. um, but still much more expensive than the UK. You've got Lidl's and Aldi, or more so on the, the East Coast, East Coast yeah. aren't they? And then there are the odd sort of more discount grocery stores, but but Walmart reigns the day, really, and, and you can't help but go in there sometimes, got everything you need, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what you're going to look for, no. from a hammer to, you know, a bag of sprouts, you know, it's, you're going to get it there. Um, but be warned, it is expensive. If you want to get an idea of the price of food out there, I've done a couple of shopping videos. I've done one in Canada, um, in one of their cheaper shops as well. That was a brilliant shop in Canada, it was, wasn't yes. it? Yeah. Um, I've done one in Walmart and I've done one in Lidl. So I'll put the links down below so you can check them out, see what you think of the prices, and I've converted it into British pounds to make it easier for you. So let's talk a little bit about where did we stay. Now, when we were coming up, we were really nervous. You know, like she was like reading like the... The newspapers and we thought god everybody's going to be like holding us up at the traffic lights you know get out well i want your motorhome it's like okay can have it um but anyway that didn't happen thank god we were very safe um but we were pretty savvy to be honest and you do have to have your wits about you oh, definitely you wouldn't just wander into areas that look dodgy and uh, obviously lock your motorhomes that kind of thing however what we did because we were nervous is we found this app called Harvest Hosts. And what you're doing is you're staying at farms. And we thought, well, that's good because we'll kind of get to know a few people, get the lay of the land, understand what it's like to RV over in the States. Because everywhere is a different beast, isn't it? Every country is very different. In, so we did that. And our experiences, I have to say, was amazing. Great, one. It was. So Absolutely. how much was the app then? Uh, the app was about, if I remember, about $96, I think, is something it, like that, for I a year's it, membership. No, that was about in pounds. It was about $100, I think. So it's roughly about £100. Set that aside and then you should be covered. And then you can get a subsidiary of the app, yep. and that's called Boondockers Welcome. And that opens up a load of houses, uh, which basically are people's houses and you park on their driveway. And that's been amazing as well. Yeah. We've got both. Um, and... What we did is we planned, I think, three weeks in advance. We did initially, we? yeah, about three weeks in advance. So we had this A4 diary. Oh, my gosh, it was like my Bible. I never went anywhere without it. It was like, I love that diary. I love it. I need a new one. Um, and what we did was we'd have where we're staying, the miles to the next place and all of that. We'd have basic details, names of the people that we're staying with. And, and we had that planned for three weeks in advance on our arrival. Mm -hmm. So we knew... That first three weeks that we were coming into the States where we were going, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Uh, beyond that, we didn't know anything. We knew we wanted to see Graceland. We knew we wanted to see Dollywood for me. Uh, <laughs> we knew we wanted to see a couple of bits, but we hadn't really planned anything. We were just going to head uh, and wing it a bit. Uh, anyway, so we get here and we stayed in the first one. I think it was at Richard Wallace's place. It wasn't was, it? yes. And we had such a great experience and we it set it up for us, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, brilliant. And we became much more confident as we'd sort of stayed in a few places. We subsequently stayed in a lot of um, uh, boondocking spots. We used an app called iOverlander, which was incredible. I love that yeah, app, don't right, I? It? it also tells you things like, you know, toilets, like so where, where you can empty your sewage, bits and pieces. Where you can get water. Where you can get water, which is really important. important. Sometimes you can just get it at a school or, or you know, a park or something. Mm -hmm. Very often that's what we were doing quite often and where you can, and some places they will have um, municipal dumps, won't they? So you yeah. can you can dump your, dump your waste and everything if we weren't in a campsite. We didn't use that many campsites, but when we did, we liked a Corps of Engineer. Oh, they were great. Oh, or the National Park ones. And the National Park ones are good as well, yeah. They're really good. Yeah. Like, And they're, they vary in price, but they're not too expensive. The Corps of Engineer campgrounds, and they're not a military. You don't have to be military to go to them. It just sounds like it. They are around, how much were they? $20? About $20 average per night. Uh, a lot of them were hookups, so electricity was available. Mm. A lot were not. Yeah, um, but you're paying accordingly, and you're paying a lot less than most of the campsites. And they were always next to water. Yeah. So there's like a little lake or something. It's beautiful. Some yeah. of them we stayed at were gorgeous, weren't oh, they? Amazing. I think that one Gunter of my favourite ones is. is oh, Boulder. that one. The, well, we stayed at a quite a rustic one. We, we both can't remember where it was. We've gone a bit brain fog, to be fair. <laughs> but when you've been on the road so long as we have, we can't remember anything, can no. we? Gary doesn't uh, even know my name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
so what we what we did find was that we became more confident and that would that's exactly what would happen to anyone um and the first time we boomed dog it was a bit like is it all right to sleep here what's that noise like oh god gary have you, have you locked the door have you locked the door you check it yes. like five million times are you on uh, shit yeah <laughs> but once we sort of woke up and thought wow that was gorgeous we got a great view that we were a bit hooked on it weren't yeah. we yeah. and uh, we kind of almost then spent i reckon the second half um boondocking didn't we yeah we got very confident and along the west coast there's an awful lot the only times we wouldn't boondock and, and i still wouldn't now is in a big city mm. um i would much prefer to we, what we did was we stayed at, a, at somebody's house through the boondocking app so i would much rather stay on the outskirts of a city go in do what you wanted to go and see like like san francisco when we went there yeah. la we did stay at someone's house in la didn't yeah. we um, but i wouldn't just boondock anyway because you don't know where you don't know the areas too well. In in America, there's a lot to do all the time, isn't yeah. there? There's it seems. Whereas Canada, you could drive for miles, days, a day. <laughs> <laughs> At least it felt like days. <laughs> and only see five million mosquitoes. That's right. <laughs> we did love Canada, though. Though it was we very did. beautiful. So we're you know the, you know and one of our favourite places was Vancouver Island. Yeah. We had an amazing time in Vancouver Island, didn't we? We, only, we were only going to go and stay for a couple of days. And then we ended up staying for 11 days, didn't <laughs> we, we, in did. the end? Because we just loved it so much. So the biggest question I always get asked is, what was your favourite place? And I'm not, I know it sounds like a cliche. I don't have a favourite place as such. I don't think we have. Oh. I don't think we can because we loved so many places for so many different reasons. We really did, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, but we did have some of them. One of my favourites was Niagara, oh, where we went on my amazing. birthday. And, and uh, mine was definitely Graceland when we went on my birthday. And that was amazing because that was Gary's last day in the military. It was his birthday and we spent the day in Graceland. You're not allowed to film in Graceland, actually. So... Although we did it, we did sort of cover Graceland a little bit in one of our videos. We were only allowed to film outside, bit, yeah. weren't we? And yeah. So it was it it wasn't quite as the same as being able to show you around inside. But anyway, them's the rules. <laughs> so we we're, we're very law abiding. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we we absolutely loved them. We did love um, the 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 beauty of the Rockies. Oh, yeah. and we, we loved the Pacific Coast Highway, didn't we? Yeah, down in Washington when we got to spend those days on that big, on beach, that beach in the motorhome, just under the awning, sat on the chair. Drove on the beach, just, didn't we? Just amazing, wasn't that it? That was perfect, wasn't it? Yeah. That's my favourite beach day ever in yeah. my whole, like in I'm, my I'm, I'm, whole 54 years, that's my favourite beach yeah. day. Um, we also really enjoyed going to Dollywood. That was me. I loved going <laughs> to Dollywood. Fun, and if it? you haven't seen some of these videos, some of them, we look back now and we're laughing ourselves, aren't we? Because <laughs> yeah. it was such fun. We just loved everywhere we went. We were really blessed. Yeah. And then we ended up on Route 66 and we did the whole Route 66. Well, we kind of were like, you know, what should we do next? We've got a couple of months left and we weren't quite sure. We knew we didn't really want to head too far. Um, to, we didn't want it to be too hot because no. we're boiling in the van. That's the other thing. We were trying everything to keep cool at stages, weren't we? Yeah. And mosquitoes are a big problem in the heat, especially Florida with those bloody awful no seams. <laughs> God, if you haven't seen that video, we'll put the link there as well. But basically, I'll just put all the links for everything. <laughs> But that that was oh. the heat was uh, unexpected, and that yeah. that's why we kept moving around and, and finding the locations that suited us. But Route sixty six was incredible. It was, it and was. considering we weren't going to do that, yeah, we, we weren't going to it off before we came out to no. to the states because yeah. we'd seen a program and it didn't look that interesting. No, but then, actually, when we got there, there were things that we didn't know about that we thought, right. Let's do, let's there, do well, there was everything that we've seen on Route 66 really didn't have some of the things we found. So if you want to watch the Route 66 series, God, Gary, what am I like? <laughs> You've got to tell them there's 10 episodes. <laughs> oh, I forgot that bit. <laughs> so basically now we're we're back in the UK. We've, we've covered such a lot of mileage. We've had a fantastic time. Um, would we do it again? That's what we get asked. Are you going back? Well, we don't have plans to go back right now, do no. we? No. Oh. But, but we wouldn't say never say never. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so our current plans, we don't really know where we're going next. There's things to do on the van. Definitely. That van needs a bit of TLC before she'll go anywhere for another long trip. 
And the only thing is, she's due in later than she was supposed to be. So, so we had her booked problem. in, yeah. but now we've got to take her out of that slot and hopefully in get the another garage. one. So, yeah. yeah, and we don't know the garage that we'd booked her into or anything. So, you know, we're, we're taking things at faith. We're hoping that we can get the right person to fix it. But we've, we've had to mess a couple of garages around because the shipping's changed anyway. Yeah. Um, we're looking to get some new tyres and bits and pieces. We've got to spend a bit of money on the van. Um, and that's that just brings us back to probably one big point that we'd like to make. Please have a contingency fund. Like this yeah. is not a cheap thing to do. Um, we'd kind of had in our mind what it would cost. Now we haven't fully worked out the exact cost of what it really cost no. yet. And that's mainly because we don't know what, what it's going to cost us now until we get the full shipping back and everything. But at some stage, I think we'll probably cover it like what was the actual cost. Yeah, but, we'll sit down and work out the main yeah. stuff. So, you know, you've got, to, you've got to factor in a lot of costs. Yeah. If you're turning up before you're shipping, for instance, you've got to stay in a hotel. Yeah. And hotels aren't that cheap, are They're they? They're not, are they? But anyway, we had a brilliant experience. You know, even the negative stuff, even the stuff like having an accident, um, you know, all the things that happened. I even had some moles removed off my face while I was out there. Because <laughs> mum was that. looking like really dodgy on my nose. So I was like, oh God, what's going on? So we've had loads of stuff happen. But we're still here, we're still loving it, and we're looking forward to our next adventure, which yeah. we will share with you. I think we're going to do a little Christmas one for you, so we'll look to release that on Christmas Eve, so that we can wish you all a happy Christmas and share with you our plans. They're not secret, they're just not made. <laughs> That's right, yeah. even we don't know them <laughs> That's why. That's the only reason why we aren't sharing them with you, because I can't help but spill me guts about everything. <laughs> so, right. you know, Gary's not very good at keeping secrets, are you? No. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it from us really mm. apart from to say thanks for being on our journey if you yeah. want to continue being on our journey we'd love to have you we are looking at maybe diversifying some of what the videos that we do but we'll share that with you um, as in when we can make our mind up about stuff um, <laughs> yes. for now if you are if you are watching if you've got this far congratulations <laughs> yes. there might be a medal in here Gary <laughs> you know so but congratulations please hit that subscribe if you haven't already it's free completely free I hate the way they use the word subscribe and if you want ding a ling that bell there's a little bell there and basically that tells you oh there's a video from A New Life in the Van <laughs> and uh, if you don't want to miss any of our action or lack of action um, as <laughs> the case may be you might want to give it a ring um but until then until the the next time we see you guys love you all loads appreciate you watching take care bye darlings <laughs>